How's everybody doing out there? This is Pete. We're at DIY Auto School today and we're working. Why are we working? Because we have to. We have to work to survive. Uh, money doesn't grow on trees. Let me tell you that, okay? That's a fact. A lot of people out there think I'm rich. Um, I get a lot of people that say, you don't need to work. Look what you got. Okay, so I didn't work for that to get what I got. That's basically what you're saying. Thank you. Um, what we're doing is we're building a car. Now, all the bodywork on this car has been done. This was a very, very extreme automobile to uh, restore. Um, we had a few complications down the road and put a stall out to it, but we're back on it. We got back on it and we are proceeding to finish it. But what people don't understand is what is involved in building a car. Um, I brought up a good point here when I was thinking about all this and I said, you know, this will be a good situation to show people that, you know, scuffing and painting a car or even doing the bodywork and painting a car, that's, that's like minor shit compared to literally building the car and putting everything back in it. So what we're doing over here is we're building the dash. We're getting ready to put everything back in the dash. Now, one thing we're missing is a speaker. Um, I got to contact the owner and see if he wants to put a factory speaker in that. If he does, then um, I'm going to have to order one on eBay. I just noticed that as I was looking right here. When you start building your dash, of your car you got to start at the top and then you work your way down all right because everything on the top has to go in first because once you start stuffing your wire harness in there your gauges your air conditioning you can't get to the shit on the top it's impossible um thank god the owner sent these to me uh it took me an hour and a half to find them these are the factory defrost vents and to put these things in look what we got these are specialty screws that have to be installed on the dash. And I don't know if you notice or not, I don't have books sitting here. I don't have, I don't have manuals. I don't have instruction sheets because this is what you call experience. This is where, this is where your knowledge comes in and that's why people bring stuff to you to fix. So, um, I can't bring the camera over here, but I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this together to uh, install it. And um, when you are building a car, when you are building a car, because that's what we're doing here, we're not restoring it, we're, we're beyond restoration. Now, the reason I'm bringing all this up and you're probably sitting there is why is he talking about this? What the fuck? Because I get a lot of smart asses on there, and I get a lot of people that call me that want me to cut them deals. And I get a lot of smart asses that says, yeah, you don't know what you're doing, ram, 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 ram. Okay, first of all, before we go any further, I want to tell everybody out there, Merry Christmas. Um, and I want to uh, say Happy New Year as well. I don't know if I'm gonna do another live video between now and then, but, um, you know, always cherish the moments of uh, holidays because we're celebrating Christmas for one main reason, and that's Jesus Christ's birthday. I want to go ahead and mention that. So I'm glad that uh, we brought that up, and uh, Christmas is in a couple days. Of course, my friend Pete will be working because there's really nothing to do out here. Um, it's just me and Minnie, and I'm not going to sit around on my ass and watch uh, reruns on TV of the Andy Griffith show uh, for two days. And I would rather be out here working. I don't know how many other people are out there working, but out here, this is where I'll be. So I'm actually building the car and trying to get all this stuff to work. And another problem you have is you end up doing this shit by yourself, okay? You end up doing all this shit by yourself because you can't rely, you can't rely on um, good help. Does that make any sense? So you get stuck doing all this shit, and then what happens is it takes takes twice as long to uh, actually get the job done. 
and people don't understand that. Now, another thing is, let me go ahead and explain this. Um, this car's been here for a long time. I get a lot of people that ask me, I want to see finished products. Well, you do see finished products. All right, you do see finished products. When I upload the videos of the finished products. If you're looking for a video that is 15 minutes long and it's triple speeded up from start to finish, then go watch that fuck off video. I don't care. I'm not here to make a, 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 a nine year restoration and, and put it in one fucking video. You know, a lot of my videos are showing you how to do shit. Okay, so, you know, let's really get real here and, and talk about the, 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 the situation. Um, so back to what we were talking about, um, I'm putting the vents in here like they're supposed to go. And it looks like this one actually goes over here like that. But do you see what I'm talking about here? We don't have left and right on this. All right. We don't know what's going on. Thank God the owner kept these little uh, specialty clip bolts and nuts for our uh, vents to go on, or we would have had to jerry rig that up. Um, I don't know if anybody's making sense out of this video or if I'm making sense, but we're going to do some walk around action and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, we got Shane rolling. We got Charles online. Shane, how's everybody doing? Uh, okay, we're behind the camera now. I hope everybody out there is having a good time. Let me go ahead and show you the situation here. This is a 68 Mustang. This car was completely rotted and rusted. A pile of shit. I got videos on this car. I think on this channel right here, I got 40, 40 videos. 42 videos. I don't remember. But uh, it's documented, well documented. If you want to go back and see what I did, that's fine. Here's an example of building a car. So we got the insulation. This is our firewall insulation. The owner bought that several years ago and sent it to me. It's been in a, sitting in a box. So I had to let that sit up here on the roof for about a week and a half for it to stretch out so I can use it. All right. Um, before we do any of that, we got to paint the dashboard. So the dash has been completely restored. You can see that. Beautiful job that it is. All right. I had to do that before we even start building the dash. Now we're going to get to the nitty gritty. Okay. Because this is for all the assholes out there that think this is an easy fucking job. And, and, and I'm making easy peasy money and all this other shit. Here is the air conditioning unit that goes in that car. This is an in-dash aftermarket air conditioning unit that consists of the main unit right here. We got a condenser over there, all right? We got these covers that I got to install. I got to get on my back. I got to get up under the dash. I got to put that shit on the fucking car, okay? We got our wiring harness. We got to wire this up. You got to have knowledge to do this, people, okay? This isn't a matchbox car. This isn't a little Hot Wheel. Okay, this isn't one of them fucking videos that get six million hits of restoring a fucking toy. Okay? Do you, uh, am I making sense here? We got to get this bracket to work. This bracket goes right here, see? Did I just show you that? I'm not looking at instructions. I got experience, people. This is what I get paid for, to do this shit right here to make this fucking car run and drive. All right, here, this goes on there. We just figured it out. Okay, what's this for, Pete? What, what the fuck is that? Do you see the hole? There's a hole right there. This goes in that hole. Goes on those right there. That takes experience, people. That's what building a car is. We're not building, we're not, we're not doing a, 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 a fucking model, plastic model car here, okay? Look at all the shit we got on the floor that I haven't even pulled out yet. Clutch pedal assemblies. 
Brake assembly, complete brake system. Wire harness, let's look at that. Smart ass. I'm talking to all the guys out there that think this is easy shit. Let's go ahead and look at this fucking thousand dollar wire harness that goes in this car. Okay, let's look at that. All right, let's check it out. So we got wire harness. Oh, this is his gauges. This is his digital gauge pack. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at all this shit. This is all his this is all his paperwork for you got it, this front and rear suspension. Look at all the paperwork just on the suspension that I had to put in this car. Let's look at that suspension. Let's see what it takes to build a custom road race, ready race, ready drive fucking car. Let's go ahead and get up under here. Um, my knee's fucked up, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And hopefully you can see that. We eliminated all the leaf springs. We put triangular four-link suspension in it. Very, very intricate situation. Four-wheel disc fucking brake system. Okay, let's go to the front. Gonna try to get a little angle on this. Let's see if we can, I don't know if you can see that. Upper and lower tubular control arm system. Rack and pinion steering, people. Okay, rack and pinion steering. We're not talking uh, uh, power assist, antique bullshit. We're talking very high-tech, expensive rack and pinion, race car ready steering. This is all the paperwork. What you're looking at right here is all the paperwork for that fucking suspension. I didn't even show you this, okay? Hold on a minute. We're not done yet. We're not even half fucking done. I want everybody to look up under that car and look at, look at the cross beam and the frame extenders that I put on there. We have turned this car into a full frame vehicle. And you're wanting to know how to build a car. You think it's easy. You think it's a easy peasy job. I'm going to go out in my garage. I can do what you fucking do. I don't need to watch your videos. Well, fuck off then. Don't watch them, bitch. Don't watch them. Got plenty of other people here that enjoy them. So we don't have a lot of thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that if we can get some thumbs up on this. Um, I don't even think I have a video that's got a thousand thumbs ups. Really don't. I've got a lot of views, but I don't have a lot of people that really, really, truly support me like they should. Let's keep moving down the line here. I'm a little pissed off today. What you're looking at is a complete fucking wire harness for this car. Um, this is a thousand dollar wire harness, people. All right, $1,000 wire harness. That's our rear body. This is the rear body harness right here. That's for all the tail lights and all the action back there. This is our dash harness. This is part of our dash harness. This is only for the gauges only. That's all this is for. Okay, you kind of get the picture. I'm not taking all this out of here. Here's our main wire harness, and it does have the uh, new dash harness. Wire harness, 67, 68 Mustang. Okay. Intricate fucking situation, people. All right. Intricate situation right there. So what we've done is we've looked at partial of what the underneath of that dash is going to look like sitting on this table. All that stuff has to be put inside the dash. To do that... I have got to get in this car and I have got to lay down on my fucking back and do everything upside down. Uh, how else are we going to do it? If anybody's got an answer, let me know. 76 people watching, only 36 thumbs up. So let's get some more, guys. Come on. The owner's sending out some dynamat. He wants me to put dynamat on the floor. We're not doing that until we get all that done under there. But uh, that's the start of how building a car is, is you start on the inside and work your way on the outside. 
Does that make any sense, people? We have got to get the electrical in this. We got to get all the brake system put on. We got to get steering columns put on. Where is that steering column? Here it is over here. The, the owner purchased a custom built steering column for this car. Um, I think it's a tilt steering column. I don't know, uh, but it's all completely fully restored. And I think it's a factory steering column. And it comes with a rag joint, which we won't be using that probably. So I don't know if he bought this on eBay or where the fuck he got this, but this is the steering column we're going to put in it. And I see it already has the bracket right there. But let me show you this. Do you see this bracket right here, guys? Do you see that? Come on over here. Let me show you. Because um, this is something that, this is the kind of stuff that after you have the car for so long or you're working on it so long, you start losing stuff. But I kept this the whole time. I have kept that from the car the whole time. And it's very important when you're restoring cars or you're building a car that you have to keep everything. You keep everything until you are done building the car. And then you give the shit back to the owner and let him throw it away. Here's a piece that goes to the steering column. And I don't even know what the fuck that goes to. But when we get to the steering column and we figure it out, then we'll know what it goes to. Does that make sense? Probably not. Probably fucking not. Um, let's go ahead and get this box up. I want to show that to you. See if I can get it up here. Hang on one second. Go ahead and look at all that paperwork right there. And kind of imagine how much work it was to do all that while I get this box up here. That's a lot of paperwork. A lot of front suspension action going on there, guys. I got to put that back in the box. Okay, so what we got here, the owner is putting a six-speed transmission in it. So we had to find a clutch system, a hydraulic clutch system that was going to work for the vehicle. The owner was stumbled and baffled, and he didn't know what to get. So I did my research. Do you see what I'm trying to get out here? I did my research. Because when you're building cars, that's what you have to know how to do is to find the parts that are going to work for that car. Because this is an explanation of what it takes to build a car. And that's part of building the car is doing the research, finding the parts that are going to work when other people can't find them. Knowledge, my friend, knowledge. So anyway, um, I found this kit. And believe it or not, a lady actually invented this system and makes it herself. And it comes with a billet aluminum reservoir. Um, you get the line right here. You get the clutch line. And then this is the system. I want to try to see if I can pull that out and show it to you. Um, this is the factory bracket that goes in the car. But this is our clutch system that this lady, let me get that in the box so we can look at it. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I, I made a detailed video on this. This is our clutch system, hydraulic clutch system that the owner was very baffled, didn't know what to do. But my friend Pete came through. Knowledge, people. It's called Mallwood. It's called Mallwood Clutch System, specifically made for the 67, 68, I think it's 68, 69 Mustang. I'm not sure. So you get this whole system. And that's part of building a car. Let me show you this shit. Come on over here. Come on, follow me. Do you see any pedals in this car? Do you see anything in this car except the firewall? I gotta figure out how to put all that shit in there. Or somebody's gotta figure it out. There's nothing in there, nothing. You gotta know what bolts to use, what washers to use, what nuts to use. Should I use this screw or that screw or what? You know, here, what's this for? I don't know. Huh, look at all them holes. Do you think that's for the radio? 
Anybody in their right mind would look at it and say, oh, there's where the radio goes. That isn't for the fucking radio. That's not a radio hall. But you didn't know that. That's where the air vents go, the center air vents for the air conditioning go in that hole right there. But any common human being would look at it and say, oh, there's where the radio goes. Knowledge. Okay? That's why I'm in business for myself, because of knowledge. Knowledge, people. Building a car is not as quicky, simple, easy as you think. You can tell I'm a little bit pissed off today. I'm a little bit on the testy side. Um, several reasons for that. I don't want to go over them, but I might. I want to tell everybody out there, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. And as we're walking around, I want you to look at this shit. I'm building this. Guy got, he hit a deer. He hit big old elk, ran across the road, almost killed the guy, scared the shit out of him. The guy lives in Wisconsin. I'm going to start doing fucking collision work here. Fuck it. I didn't really want to, but you know what? Why not? I can do that if I want, because I got the knowledge to know how to do it. Are you getting the message out there, lazy ass? Are you doing it? So we got uh, this mess right here. And I can straighten this. I can actually, if we look, look at this buckle, I could straighten that right there. But the situation is that's part of, part of the core support, which you didn't know. You didn't know that this was actually called a, a left-hand core support brace. You thought that was an inner fender section. Knowledge! So we're going to go ahead and replace that because it's not that expensive. And it's pretty simple. We got uh, four spot welds here. Got a couple more spot welds up here. I'm sure there's something behind this hinge. We'll pull that thing out, slide the new one in, bolt everything up, get it lined up. And then we'll spot weld it back on. That's a big collision job, people. Let me show you the parts on this. This collision job that you're looking at, this collision job that you're looking at right here, $13,000 to fix this truck. Do you know how much the labor is on that? Do you know how much this is? A, I'm going to give you a good example how the corporation is fucking you and me and sticking it in our fucking ass, all right? The labor on this job is paying $2,600. The rest of the money is for parts. $2,600 labor, but the whole job's costing $13,000. Go figure that. Um, there was a guy that visited my shop yesterday from New York. His name was Ed. Hope Ed's doing good out there. And I think I mispronounced his name on Facebook. So I got to change that. I think I called him Dave. Uh, anyway, Ed's from New York. He's got his own business. Said he opened his own business from watching my videos. And he said he's really doing good. Now, this isn't the first guy that uh, actually said that uh, they've opened a business from my videos and everything they learned is from my videos. But I told him, I said, yeah, they're paying, uh, what's the flag hour up there? Down here, it's uh, $74 an hour for flag hour. He says, not at my shop, it's not. It's 100 and, I think he said $128 an hour is what I charge. And if you don't like it, get your shit out. I don't give a fuck. I'm not, I'm not you know, don't give me whiny stories because you're not getting a deal over here. So I'm going to ask you this. And if the owners are watching, please don't take it personal. Okay, don't take it personal. This is a question that I'm asking people. That Camaro over there and this fucking Mustang have been in my shop for seven or eight years. So should I give these guys, should I give these guys seven or eight year ago prices? The insurance, the, the manufacturers and the corporation isn't giving us eight year prices on parts. I mean, think about it. 
So does that mean I've had this car so long and I'm working on so long? And anybody out there that says, well, you're, you, why do you got it there? You're a slow ass. You don't know. Gonna, Fuck you. You don't know the whole story and I'm not going to sit here and explain it to you. Ain't got nothing to do with me, bitch. Ain't got nothing to do why these cars have been here that long with my situation. I'm going to leave it at that. But what I'm going to say, should I be charging these guys $13,000 prices? Or should I charge them uh, uh, four or $5,000 prices from eight years ago? You know, that's where you get fucked up when you're doing this kind of fucking work and shit sits around and doesn't get worked on and, and just, you know, piles up. Now, the reason these two cars are here, the Mustang and the Camaro, is because I'm a nice fucking guy. When the owners ran into situations, I did tell them they have to get their cars out, okay? I gave them an option. Get your cars out, go somewhere else. Or you can put them outside, and I got other shit to work on where people are paying me money. They decided to put them out in the back and store them until their bad issues became good issues. So I went ahead and agreed to do that. But uh, what I'm charging these people is nobody's business, for one. Um, how much it costs, how much I charge to restore this GTO is nobody's fucking business. It's my business. Okay? And I'm going to tell you something else. I treat everybody fair on restoring cars. Everybody gets treated the same. Nobody gets treated special other than the other guy. So building cars is very stressful. Building a car is like, you know, even though I've been doing this for 43 years, it's still a very stressful. I didn't sleep all fucking night last night thinking about the Mustang. And where are the defrost vents? I don't know where the fucking defrost vents are. I got to put those in first. Well, now that we, you and me, you and me were looking at that, I ain't got the speaker. I don't have a speaker to put in this fucking car. So I got to contact the owner and see if he even wants a speaker in his dash, which I'm sure he does. I'll have to order what I need. And wait a fucking week to get a speaker. Then you run into this shit right here. Um, this was a trade out. This was a trade out. This was a buddy deal. I just saw somebody say buddy deal. Look where the motor is, people. It's not in the car. It's not in the car. The motor is on the ground. I had to pull the motor out. Very, very uh, intense situation. I just got done rebuilding the carburetors. I found out these carburetors are from 1983. 1982, 83. I don't even know if the carburetors are going to work, but I rebuilt them. That's part of building a car. When I kicked the engine over and got it started, the alternator's bad. I had to buy a new alternator. Look at this fucking distributor. Really? Are you joking me? It started, but it didn't run for long. Um... I don't know, you know, this is building a car. The clutch on this thing, I asked the owner, I said, what's wrong with the clutch? He said, oh, it's a hydraulics. Okay, bullshit. I said, it's the clutch. No, 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 the clutch is good. That clutch is like 1968 fucking shit. Look at this. Look at this fucking, look how glazed that is. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, sure thing, dude. Sure thing, mister, let's swap out and, and be buddies. That's what you get. I've done everything to this fucking car but paint it. Everything. I've done every piece of mechanical work that you can think of. I'm not going to go through it. I, I, I've done all the electrical. You can see where I had to put wire harnesses in it and all this other shit. Replaced parts. $1,500 for fucking shocks. It cost me $1,500 to, to rebuild the shocks on this. It's got six shocks in the back, two in the front. Five, six hundred dollars for a fucking gas tank to hook up the gas system. So building cars, people, is a job. 
Most people that are in business like I am don't have holidays like you. They don't get to relax and hang out with their family and, and go on holidays and, and visit and, and all this other shit. They just don't get to do it. All right, I'm gonna put my camera up here. And then we're gonna go like this. Well, you know what? We aren't gonna be able to do that. I'm gonna to have to stand over here because I can't see myself from the other side. Um, let me go ahead and do this because we're almost ready to cut this video off. And we got 61 thumbs up. I thought for a Christmas present, you know, at least you guys that are watching would give me thumbs up and I'd have even thumbs up on even viewers. I know a lot of people can't thumbs up, but you know, it'd really be nice if you could. Really, really would. <clears throat> so, what's the conclusion to building a car? We got knowledge for one. You got to know what you're doing. Um, instructions help if you don't. They sell books of uh, uh, manufacturer books. You can buy manufacturer books, and it tells you piece by piece, nut by nut, bolt by bolt, how to put the car back together. Um, you can do that. But the main thing that you need to build a car, I don't care if it's a pickup truck or a collision job or whatever, is you got to have a positive attitude. Like I said, I didn't sleep all night last night because I didn't know where these things were. And I had to go through every fucking box three times. I finally found them in one of these boxes in here. But uh, I didn't sleep all night on that because I kept thinking, well, I got to put those in first. And that is the situation you have when you're doing a car like this and it's not your car. You want to get it done. You want to get it out of the shop. You want to move down the line. I don't have the wipers for this car. The wipers have got to go in this car. Did I tell you at the beginning, you start at the top and work your way down? We don't have wipers. Where the fuck are they? I don't know. So if the owner is watching this, pack the shit up and get it sent out here. I need it. I got to have it. I got a table full of shit over here that's got to go in the dash. I got to have wipers before I do that. So I'm fucked. I can't work on this now. I'm gonna put the fucking vents in there and we're done. We're done. Another day, three, four, seven days stalled out waiting on parts that we should already have. That's what it's like building a car, people. That's one of the stipulations of why it takes so long to build a car. No speaker, no wipers. What the fuck? Do you see what I'm saying? We need wiper blades. We need wiper fucking motors and all this other shit so we can get down the road on this thing. Hopefully I'll be able to put the air conditioner unit in here without the wipers. I don't know. I'm really hoping I can. I'm going to check out the situation and do what I got to do. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School. Um, I'm presuming that nobody's working today because Christmas is in two days. And I also got word that uh, there's not going to be anybody working until Tuesday because it's the day after Christmas. So I guess everybody's going to have a four or five day weekend, which I can opt out and do that if I want to. But like I said, I really don't want to because I don't have nothing else to do but work. Okay, we're, we're getting up there on the thumbs up. I appreciate it, guys. We got 80 versus 94. I, I like that. We're very, very close. This is the conclusion on building a car. And this goes out to all the people that own cars that want their car built by a professional. Like me, like me, all right? This is the thing about me. Okay, let me go ahead and tell you about me. Um... 
I'm one of these people that you can actually trust. You can give me your car all the way from the United Kingdom and it will be done the right way. I'm not gonna chisel myself to get free money from you. I'm not gonna rip you off. Your, your car isn't gonna come into my shop and be a storage unit. I'm not gonna put your car outside in the uh, weather so it'll rust out and rot out and then tell you I'm working on it. I'm not gonna get half the money up fucking front and then give me the other half as I need it. I don't do that shit. I don't rob from Peter to pay Paul. I only get money after I do work to your car. And sometimes I don't even collect any cash until I really need it. That's an honest fucking guy right there. Not these people that say, I need half the money up front and the other half when it's done and rah, rah, rah. And we got 16 other cars. And if you want your car to be worked on, then get in line and it's got to be at my shop and I'm charging you $190,000 to do it. And if you don't like it, fuck you. Don't take your car to that guy. Wise up. Wake the fuck up, people. Find an honest person to work on your car. Someone that's not an asshole. Someone that's not a smart ass. Someone that will work with you and shake a hand, make a friend. Someone that will, that will be your friend through the job, not just an acquaintance. That's what it takes when you're building a car. All right? You got to get somebody that has the knowledge of what the fuck's going on clutch pedal system and you got to have somebody you can trust to put your car together so when it's all done you don't wreck it and kill yourself this is a real fucking car here people this is not a matchbox this is not a hot wheels i have built there was a kit car manufacturer out there called street beast classic motor carriage fiber fab i built 478 of those cars do you know how many came back to my shop for problems? Can anybody answer that? I'm going to answer it. Zero. I had zero cars out of 478 kit cars that you have to build from scratch, come back to my shop for any type of issue whatsoever. None. So I'm going to ask you, did this video help you out? Did it give you knowledge? Did it wake you up to say, you know what? The next time I ask a person to do something for me that's a professional, that's honest, that does what he said he's going to do, I'm not going to ask for a buddy deal. I'm not going to only be his friend when he's working on my fucking car. I'm not going to only be his friend when he's fixing the uh, the toilet, because I can't fucking flush the thing because it's backed up. I'm going to pay him what it's worth. Because this fucking guy knows what he's doing. And I trust him. I want everybody out there to take it easy and have a great holiday. I'm going to be working. Um, hopefully... I'm going to contact the owner here in about 10 shakes of a second as soon as I get out and tell him I need that wiper shit ASAP. And if he has a speaker, get that shit out here. I'm going to go ahead and proceed and move forward on putting all this shit in the car. Oh, I forgot. Uh, he's going fuel injection. We got a fuel injection fuel tank. I haven't even finished the brakes underneath because I can't get down on my knees. I got, I, I just had knee replacements. You want me to tell you why? You want me to tell you why I had my knees replaced? I had this one done in August. I had this one done a month ago. I'm out here working. I'm working 15 hours a fucking day. I just had that replaced a month ago. Do you want me to tell you what fucked my knees up? I'm going to tell you what fucked my knees up. Standing on concrete and working 14, 18 hours a fucking day. Standing on concrete and busting my ass for you. That's what fucked my knees up. Will they ever be the same? No, they won't. They'll be better than they were though. I'll, I'm sure I'll have minor pains throughout the rest of my life, but nothing like I used to have. 
But that's why my knees are bad. Because I work my fucking ass off and I work hard. Okay, I think that we got the message across and, and um, you know, enough bitching and complaining. A lot of people don't like the bitching and complaining. I'd understand. I know. It sucks. It gets old. But if you get the message to somebody and they realize what's going on, then it's worth listening to the bitching and complaining. I got to go take it easy. I'm out here building cars. I'm putting cars together from scratch. That's what I'm doing. Merry Christmas.